All right, so in this walkthrough, which I warn you, might get a little long, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through the process of uh, post requests, making a post request, which is something that you'll have to figure out how to do for this empty checkpoint. Um, so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna reuse some of the ideas that we use to make get requests, which is a way of retrieving data from the server, and we're gonna apply those to this new uh, exciting world of, of posts. And I'll show you where some of the differences are um, and how to get this to work. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna, I'm, I'm using the, the starter code, uh, which is a nice way of just making sure that I don't expose any information from the solutions or whatever that I don't want you to see. Um, I'm also gonna do this in a way that shows you how to do sort of test-driven development, right? Um, and not just test-driven, actually real test-driven development in the sense that we're actually gonna use the test suite to exercise the functionality that we're going to build. Um, this is a very common thing to do, you know? You might think like, how would I build an app in the real world? You know, every time I wanna add a feature, do I have to like build all the UI for it first? And we've been giving you the test suites for this project, but what people do when they build real things is they don't build all the UI first because it's really tedious, right? Imagine every time you wanna test something in your app, you have to like load it up, navigate to the right place, and then click a button, right? And then maybe it crashes and then you have to start all over again. So that's really inefficient. Um, typically what we do is we add tests and we drive the code based on the tests. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do here. Um, again, I have the starter code for the project. So there's not much in here. Um, I'm loading this up in the MP0 test suites, but you could put this anywhere. Uh, you could write the same code in the MP3 test suites. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by adding a test. And the first thing we're gonna do, this is gonna take us a few minutes, but the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a new route to the server and support in the client for just a get, which is what we've done in the past. So we have some starter code to base it on. Once we have that working, what we'll do is we'll modify it to do a post, which is actually a way to transmit data to the server. We'll talk a little bit about what this means along the way. Um, but let's start out by writing our test suite. So uh, in, in the uh, testing framework that we are using, uh, the way that we create a test is we use this, uh, this thing called an annotation. This is not something we've talked about very much, and we're not going to, but um, this is the thing with the at sign. That marks this method as being a test. And you'll see as soon as I add that annotation, I have this uh, play button over here that I can use to run that test. Um, the semantics of tests using the test suite that we're using or the test uh, framework that we're using is that the tests return a void, so they don't return anything. And the idea is if the test doesn't throw an exception, it succeeds, and if it throws an exception, it fails. Um, so this test doesn't do anything, which means it's going to succeed, okay? Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna borrow this little check from uh, the, the other test that I had in here. Let's reformat this so that, oh, come on. It's weird, okay. So I'm gonna borrow this and I'll rerun the test suite again, um, just to make sure that the server gets started up properly because I'm gonna need the server to start um, so that I can add, add, this, add this route. Uh, okay, great. So now what I'm going to do um, well, first of all, uh, I'll do, let me do a few things. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm gonna add a, a timeout here, and I'll show you why in a second. Uh, if I don't add a timeout, uh, this test can actually uh, get a little tedious. So you'll see uh, this is a straightforward addition to the annotation that marks this test as timing out after five seconds, right? And actually, I should make that a little smaller. Let's make like two seconds. Um, the timeout is in milliseconds. Um, so let's say this, is the, this test takes two seconds. Let's run it again to make sure it doesn't time out. This might be a little too short for this test. It takes a minute for the server to actually fire up. Um, okay, it seems to work, great, okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new route on my server and I'm gonna create new support for it in the client. And so right now I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create another get request. Um, we've already been able to do those. Um, so I'm gonna open up my server side code um, and I'm gonna model this off of get summary. I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. I'm not gonna pass the path. I'm actually gonna pass the entire request. So I'm gonna write a method called private mock uh, response get, and I'm gonna call this get string uh, for a reason that you'll see in a minute. Uh, so I'll say non null uh, final recorded request request. So this is gonna be passed to request. And for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna borrow this piece of code from get summary. And all this does is return this is what's called an HTTP 200. It's a, it's a response that indicates that everything was okay. Now the body of this response is empty, uh, okay, which is fine. Um, and so all I'm gonna do is do this. Uh, I think that's just a little check sale there that I can ignore, okay. Um, and now I need to add, uh, remember what we did before. 
So I have a method to handle this particular type of route, but I also need to add the route to my dispatch table. So let's do that uh, down here. And in this case, I'm going to say if path dot equals uh, string. And so uh, if the if the path that's being requested here is is exactly string, so I'm going to have to be careful to get this right. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to return get string. And in this case, I'm passing it the entire request. And we'll see why we're doing that in a second. Um, for get summary, we just passed it a string. In this case, I'm going to pass it the whole request. And again, uh, we'll we'll get to why we're doing that. Okay. So now I've got this code added to my server. Why is this complaining? Oh, okay, that's fine. Uh, we'll, we'll use that request soon enough. Now I need to add it to the client. Um, and now, you know, I'm just gonna CMP this. Uh, I've got a get summary method. I'm gonna add a get string method uh, to my client. Uh, let's see, get string. Uh, it's going to take just callbacks. I don't need to pass any parameters to it yet. Um, the URL is gonna look like this, right? It's gonna look like string and then ends with a slash, um, okay? And so, oh wait, I gotta close my string. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, so this is making a request. Let me rename this so I'm not con so I'm not confused here. I'll rename, I'll say string request, okay? Um, and really what it's doing here is very similar. Now, what I need to do is I need to adjust what happens when I get data back from the server um, because this data is not going to be JSON. Um, it's going to eventually be just a string. Uh, okay, um, and so what I'm going to do is I need to add a callback. Let's call this default void uh, string response, and we'll say string. Uh, I'll just call that string. Uh, okay, so this is this is what's returned. This is my callback. So remember, the callback is a way for the client to pass back information to the caller um, that has is retrieving the string, right? Um, okay, and this is going to be used by this method, and for now, what I'm going to do, um, string response, and I'll just pass an empty string, okay? All right, these are just check style layers. These are things I can ignore. Um, all right, so now I've got the server-side support. I've got the client-side method added. I have the callback, so I can get information back. Now I actually need to test it. So how am I gonna do this? This is uh, something that we've done in other test suites for parts of the MP. Um, and the trick here is I need a way, well, there's a couple things. First of all, I need a client. So I'm going to say client client is equal to client.start. That's the method that, that hands me back a reference to a client that I can use. So now I have something that I can use to make requests. The problem here is that I need a way for the test suite to wait for the request to finish. And to do that, I'm going to use this idea of a completable future. You'll see this in some of the test suites that we've given you for MP2 and, and also for, for this checkpoint MP3. Uh, so I'm going to say, a completable future. This is a, a built-in part of Java. Um, this is an object that I can wait for, right? This will uh, allow me to wait for something to happen before the test suite completes. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say first request, and then I'll create this new completable uh, future object. Completable futures have two methods that I care about. The one method is a get. Get will wait until complete is called. Um, so what I'm going to do is at the very end of my test suite, I'm going to say for first request dot get, and that'll hand back a string. Now, why is this angry with me? It's angry with me because there's some exceptions that this can throw. And so I'll just add them to the, um, to the uh, signature for my test method. Now, what will happen is if this fails because of an execution uh, exception, which is one of the ways it can fail, the test will fail. So that's fine. This is one of the cases where throwing something out of this method is perfectly okay because if something throws out of this method, the method will fail, and that's what I want to happen. This is a testing method. Okay, now what I want to do is actually want to make the request. So I'm going to say client dot get uh, string, and I need to pass some callbacks here. So I'm going to uh, pass my callbacks, and the only one I want to override is the string response. So when I get the string back, so, so when, so I'm, I make the request, the client makes the request to the server and it waits, and then when the request comes back, it calls this callback. So I'm providing the callback function here. And what do I want to do here? Well, remember I said that completable future had two methods, get, which waits for the re result, but it also has a complete method that sends the result back, right? So this is sort of a mechanism for waiting for a callback to, to finish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say first request.complete and I'll pass this way. Somehow I keep wanting to write stain rather than string. Okay. So, this is test-driven development. 
don't need to start the app, don't need to run the emulator, I'm just gonna run my test suite again. In fact, I think if I just hit Control R, it'll just run again. Um, so now let's see what happens. Okay, I'm, I'm running my, uh, my test post method, and uh, I don't know what's gonna happen. Maybe I messed something up. It looks like it worked. Um, now let's uh, let's check here. So what should my server now? Now here's uh, let's do something fun. So let's have the server send back. Okay. So before I set the body to empty. So let's say set body to uh, something like foo. Uh, right. So now the body of my uh, response is foo. Now on my client, what I'm going to do is I'll say uh, callbacks dot string response response dot get body. Uh, I think it's body. Uh, get bytes dot. Okay, hold on a sec. I gotta I gotta remind, remind myself how to do this. <laughs> response dot uh, to string. No, that's not what I want. Cause that's that's going to give me. Um, nope. Let's see. Get bytes dot to string let's try this uh, okay um, so that will pass back uh, the result of, of, of pulling the, the bytes out of there which, which we're going to we're going to try and see if this works and then what I expect to happen is uh, and I'm going to now add this into my test suite I expect that first request dot get should equal foo. right so if I've done things correctly this will work let me try it so now the, the, the server is setting the response body to be foo, and that's something that's supposed to be passed back through the client to my, uh, to my test, and it works. Cool, okay. So this is get. This is what we've already done. This is taking some data from the server and moving it to the client. What about if we want to do the opposite? What about if the client has data that it needs to send to the server? And this is also very common, right? So you know, both of these requests, by the way, are involved with all the daily web browsing that you do. So when you go to a website, your web browser issues a GET request. It says to the server, you know, send me what the current page on CNN.com is. So it says CNN.com, send me your page. And CNN.com says, okay, and it sends you a bunch of information, HTML, which you then render, and that's what the page looks like. Um, now. That's very, very common. When you're browsing the web, a lot of times what you're doing is you're issuing these GET requests for data from the server, and what you get back is HTML, the browser displays it. What about when you do things like purchase something? Or what about if you click on a button on Facebook and you say like or whatever, or you post something to Instagram, a new photo? There are also times when your device sends data to a server, and that requires using a different method in the HTTP protocol. So we're using a GET method. GET is what it sounds like. Give me some information. Right? We request the server send us something. With post, we have data and we want to send it to the server. So now we're going to walk through how to do that. It's really cool stuff. Right? With these two methods, to be honest, you can pretty much build any type of application you want. There are lots of other methods in the HTTP protocol suite, but these two are by far the most common. And on some level, it's like I can move data one way and I can move data the other way. And combining those two together, I can build any, really any type of system. Okay, so let's check out what we need to do in our client. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste this get string method. Um, instead, I'm gonna call it post string, okay? And now what I'm gonna have it do is I'm gonna have it send a string. So we need some data to send, right? Um, so I'll have the first parameter be a string and the second parameter be the callbacks again because I still need to know when the request completes, okay? So I'm gonna use the same URL. And we're going to change how we handle this in a minute. Um, now I need to make a different type of request. Okay, so you'll see here that the request.method for my get string request is a get. I need to change this to post. Okay. Now the response, we're going to talk a little bit about how to get this right. But, the, but for, for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, just for the sake of testing, I'm just going to hand back the same string that you gave me. So this is actually not using the server's response. What we're trying to do right now is get data to the server. Now you might be wondering, wait, hold on a sec. You said I was supposed to send the server the string. How do I add that to the request? And it turns out when I create a string request using Bali, I don't have one of the parameters to the constructor is not data to send. And so the way I need to do this 
is I need to override one of the methods, right? Uh, let's see here. I think it's uh, body. Let's see here. Uh, get body. There we go. Okay. Remember my anonymous object syntax? I create, you know, uh, uh, an object and then I can override methods inside this block that I add after the constructor. So now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm sort of creating a new anonymous object that implements string request or extends string request essentially. Um, and I'm overriding this method. So get body allows me to set the body of the request. So this allows me to actually include information in the request that gets transmitted to the server. This is what I want, right? This is where the magic happens. This allows me to put the data that I have, which is here, right? And, and let me add this non-null annotation so it stops whining about the string. Um, now what is it upset about? Oh, fine, okay. Okay, so this is what allows me to put this data into the request. Now, you'll see here uh, what, it, what it requires is a byte array rather than a string, but it's very easy to convert them, right? So here's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna uh, re return to get bytes. That's what returns a byte array, okay? So now, this, is a, it, it, this looks very similar to what I just implemented. Right? Looks very similar to get. I only made a couple small changes, but fundamentally the directionality of data flow is totally different. So get asks the server to send me stuff. Post, as the name applies, so like putting something in the mail, post sends data to the server. Okay, so now that the data is in the request, how do I get at it on the server? Okay, so now what we're gonna do, now I'm, I'm essentially gonna stop using the, the, the get string method on the client for a minute. And instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on handling post, right? In a minute, what we'll do is we'll combine them together to great effect, right? But for now, let's just focus on post. So I'm going back to my method here. And, and where is it? Let's see here. Uh, okay, get straight, right? Um, and I should probably call this something else. Let me call this uh, handle string, right? Because this is going to eventually actually use be used for both get and post. Right? We can actually handle them together in the same method. Um, so I don't want to call it get string because I'm going to use it for post as well. All right. So now the question is, how do we get at the data in this request? This is one of the reasons I passed the request to the method is because I need information in there. Okay. So let's try this. Let's, uh, so there is a method in here, request.getBody. Um, and then that gives me a, uh, what's called a buffer. And then this additional method called read UTF-8 that allows me to... Uh, read the contents as a string, okay? Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my test suite, and instead of calling get string, I'm gonna call post string, and I'm gonna post the string, um, just something silly, right? Um, and that's okay, and then and let's see here. And, and now I, I don't really care about this. I'm gonna take out this assertion because I, I do need to get um, so that the test waits, uh, but I don't really care about what the result is. Uh, what I'm trying to do right now, honestly, is just, I just want to see that print statement because I want to make sure that the data that I'm trying to put, right? So this is my client, right? The client is trying to send this really important message to the server. What up? Um, people, people online have described me as a programmer, which really annoys me. But anyway, maybe I'm a programmer because I use the string what up in my examples. Maybe. Um, okay. So let's, uh, let's call test post. So I'm running my test method again. Um, it's doing roughly the same thing, except now I'm trying this post technique where I'm trying to actually get some data to the server and I wanna see if this actually works. So you'll see, check that out, that was printed. That print statement came from the server. So I am now successfully transmitted data from the client to the server, pretty cool. All right, so now here's what we're gonna do. Now we're, we're inching in the direction of kind of some of what you need to do for the MP or for MP3 checkpoint. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use both. So I'm gonna use get and post. I'm gonna allow post to change, imagine like the server has one string that it remembers. I'm gonna allow post to change that string and get to return the latest string. And I'm gonna test them to make sure they both work. Okay, so let's go into my server side code. So now I'll put here uh, private the string. And what I'll do to make this a little bit happier is I'll, I'll, I'll initialize it to, to the empty string. Um, and so the idea here is that uh, this, the first time, if I haven't actually changed it through post, the first time I get it, it'll be empty. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to use the request. 
and then you need to use the request type. If you look down here, there's actually some examples of this. So the request method, right? And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say if request.get method, and then I'll say equals ignore case uh, get. So this is a get request. Else if request.get method equals ignore case is post. So that's where I'm gonna handle my post. Otherwise, what I'll do um, is okay, so let's let's focus on handling each one. So if it's a git request, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send back a response where I set the body to be the string. Okay? So that's how I handle my my get. Now, if it's a post request, that means that there's data in the request that I should use to modify the string. So I'll say the string is equal to uh, request.getbody dot read utf and what I'll do for now we'll talk about this in a second is I'm going to send back just the same response that I sent back uh, with the get so the only difference between get and post at this point is that get modifies sorry get does not modify the string whereas post because there's data in the request takes the data out uses it to set the string and then sends me back the same response if I get down here, then this is not a good uh, request because it's, there are there are other types of HTTP requests. There's actually quite a few. There's a big like vocabulary of different things that you can do with HTTP protocol. There's like head and put and patch and delete and these are not used that commonly. Get and post are by far the most common types of HTTP requests. So um, so anyway, but you know if if you if you made a call to this uh, path to the string to that route and it wasn't a get or a post, then that was a bad request. Those are not ones that I'm prepared to handle. But this is an example. Remember, I, I, I promised that we would show how to use a single method to handle both get and post. So because I'm passing the request, I can check the request method um, and see if it, oh yeah, that's okay. Um, to, to, to see that it actually, uh, it actually um, to, to distinguish between these get and post requests. Okay, so now here's what should happen. The first time I get something from the server, it should return an empty string. Then if I post and then I get again, it should return the new value. So let's write a test suite that reflects that, okay? So the first request I'm gonna do, let's make this, um, let's say we're gonna do get string, and that does not take a string argument, it just takes these callbacks. And then I set first request, and then I'm gonna do assert that, uh, first request dot get dot equals the empty string. Okay, so the first time I call it, I should get the empty string back. So let's try it to see what happens. Make sure that everything's compiling, make sure that this test runs. And, you know, when, when people talk about test driven development, sometimes they insist, like, you have to write the test first. And I don't agree with that. Um, you should write the test right away. Right, like don't delay, right? Once you think something works, write the test to validate that and then move on. So it's kind of like you write a little bit of code, write a little bit of test, write a little bit of code, write a little bit of test. When I work on projects, I'm do always doing that, right? Like always like the test suites, I mean, it's rare that I ever make a change to a project that doesn't involve both the test suites and the code, right? Because you write some test suites, figure out what's happening, write the code to make the thing that didn't work, that you were expecting to work, work again, and then they, they, they kind of move forward together hand in hand. But it's not like you always have to write the test suites first. No one cares, right? Just write them soon. Um, okay, so now let's make sure my post works. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this. Unfortunately, I have to uh, rename this variable, okay? Um, so now I need to use second request, okay? Um, and now I'm gonna post a string. And I'm gonna post, have that string be choo-choo. It's a good string to post. Um, and now uh, what it should pass back, remember it passes back the, the, the new string. So it modifies the string on the server and then it passes back the modified string. Uh, now I make sure that I have, to use, I have to use the right variable here, otherwise it's gonna fail. Okay, second request, all right. So now my first request retrieves the initial value, which is the empty string. My second request does a post to change the value that's saved on the server to choo choo, and then expects that choo choo will be in the body of the request. Okay? Um, and once this works, what I'll do is I'll add a third method, right? So that works, awesome. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a third method to make sure that the next get works properly, right? Because once I change the string, 
we'll say for request. Um, this is once I change the string, future get request should see the new uh, the new value. Okay, so I'll say third request, third request. It's probably a little bit of a nicer way to do this. If I was writing a long test, I would this would get sort of tedious. Um, so you probably find a different way to structure the code, but uh, for now this is fine. Okay, so this works, right? So the first time I get back an empty string, then I do post, change it to choo choo, and then I confirm that the next get retrieves choo choo. All right, so we are almost there, right? A lot of what you need to see um, is already there. So let's kind of review for a minute. So my post string method, um, you know, it's, makes a post request. It uses this get body method to take, essentially what this does is it takes this string and inserts it into the body of the request. So it's almost like an envelope that I stick this value in, right? I put some data into the envelope. Now, when you use this for MP3, the contents of the request are not just going to be a string. They will be a string, but they're going to be JSON, right? This is one of the places where JSON comes into the picture. And it's one of the things it's used for. This because it allows me to take an object, turn it into a string, which I can then send over the network to the server, which takes the string and deserializes it. So you're going to do serialization on the client before you send the data and deserialization on the server once you receive it, right? So that'll be pretty cool. Um, all right, so that's what my post does. My get string is very similar to the other uh, methods I've seen. Um, and let's see here. So the other thing I want to make sure is, yes. Oh, wait, sorry. Um, so the other thing that's happening here is that you'll see that I'm still calling string response and I'm passing the string that was passed here. And I want to fix that to make sure that, um, so this is one of those things that you know, I would have noticed and be like, uh oh, you know, I want to make sure this still works. Because the response to my post should contain the string that I, that I was looking for. All right, so I'm going to run the test suite again just to make sure that this change didn't affect anything. And again, you know, I'm also trying to model some good behavior here and some productive behavior. Running test suites, like I, I probably run test suites every few minutes when I'm, when I'm working actively on a project, particularly if I'm doing something complicated. Um, okay, cool. So that still works. Um, and then on my server, I have this single method that um, uses this get method um, method of the request to figure out whether this is a get or post. If it's a get, it just sends back a response that contains the current string in the body. If it's a post, it pulls the string out of the body of the request, changes the string that's saved, and then sends back the new string. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about here that's important is this idea of a redirect. So a lot of times what happens with the post, so the, the, the semantics of post and get are different and, and different in an important way. So a get request is supposed to be something called idempotent, which means that it doesn't change anything. If I you do the same get request twice, I'm supposed to get back the same data, okay? So again, imagine that you go to your favorite online newspaper. You refresh the page twice pretty quickly, right? Obviously, if you wait like a week, the contents of the page are different. But if you refresh the page twice, like within a short time span, typically you'll see the same content. Um, post, on the other hand, changes something about the world. So post is used for things like purchasing something. So when you push the button on your favorite online store, what happens is that the, in the state of the world is now different, right? And something's going to happen. Eventually, a package is going to show up at your door, right? And that was a chain of events that was set into motion by the fact that you made that post. So post changes the world, get does not, right? Same thing with, you know, like a social network uh, online, right? Like you hit like, right? When you hit that, what's happening is there's a post request made back to, you know, uh, social network company servers that changes something about the world so that there's one more like on that story or whatever, right? Um, so post changes the world, get does not change the world. Um, the, one of the results of this is that typically the response to a post request is to ask the client to make another get request to see the new data, right? So for example, what we're doing right now is when, the, when we get a post request, we're returning information in the body. That's not actually typically what's done in the HTTP protocol. Instead, what we do is we send what's called a redirect. Okay, so let's, let me show you how to do that. So this line is gonna stay the same. I'm still modifying the string value that's stored on the server. I don't wanna do anything differently here. But for the reply, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do new mock response, that's set response code. And I think it's um, moved, yeah, so what's called 302. It's moved temporarily. This is known as a redirect. Um, 
Now, the other thing that I need to do is I need to do something called set a, uh, setting a header. Um, and let's see, it looks like I can do this once or I can just do, uh, let's see here, I just want to do set header. I just want to set one header. Um, and so the other thing I need to do is I need to, I need to tell the client where it should go. So I'm saying, okay, I finished your request, but rather than sending back data, I'm going to tell you to reload a different page. Um, and here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set uh, location and then location is string. And I'll talk about why, why you do this in a second. I think that's just a formatting problem. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so now let's try this again. And let's see if we also just want to see if it works. So let's run the test again. We're going to run the same test suite that we just ran. Um, and one thing I want to do actually is I, I want to record the pattern of accesses here. I want to make sure everything worked. Um, okay, so let me go up here and I'm going to put a little bit of logging into my method. So I'll say uh, print, sorry, zoom that out, uh, print len, uh, and this is uh, request.get method. So this will tell me what type of method I'm seeing coming through here. So let's run this again. Um, and we're going to look at the pattern of requests that are made to this handle string method. And then we'll talk about why that happens. Okay. Okay. So you'll see, let's go back to my test suite. The first thing I do is I make a get request. I see that right here in the output, right? Next, I make a post request and I see that in the output. Then I make another get request and I see that in the output, but there's this extra get. And the reason for the extra get is because of that redirect. So here's what happened. When the client made the post, the server said, wait, when you're done, you need to reload this information. And that's the, that's the response. We've already configured your client to do this automatically. So your client, when it gets a redirect, will automatically follow it. Right. So it's like you send the data to the server. The server said, OK, hold on. Instead of a response, I'm going to tell you to reload this other page. And it did that reload and sent back that data automatically. So that's why we see this get request. So it's actually let's see here. Uh, let me put in some additional. Um, I'll do this. Put uh, starting second request. And then down here, we'll put print starting third request. So we can just see, I'm not going to put one of these at the top. We can just kind of see what the pattern is, right? Because what you're going to notice is that there's actually two HTTP requests that correspond to that second request. Yeah, see this? A post and a get. And the get is there because of that redirect that we added. Um, that's something that our test suites and the assignment grader expect you to do, right? So, and you should do it basically the same way as, as we did here. Now, the value here is the URL that the client should load. And here you may need to, to uh, mess around a little bit to get this right, right? Essentially, now let's talk for a minute about how to map this onto what you need to do for MP3. Because this is just about modifying strings. What you're gonna send to the server for MP3 is a rating, right? Um, it's a rating for a course from a client. You need to save that rating on the server now. You're going to get multiple ratings for multiple courses for multiple clients. And so it's a little bit more complicated than just being able to save one string. But a lot of the code is very similar. If you get a post request, there will be a, you should have a rating. You should put a serialized rating inside the post request. So your post request should contain JSON that you can deserialize to a rating object. Once you have that rating object, you're then going to figure out what to do with it. It's going to have a client ID and it's going to have a rating, right? Um, and you're out, you're going to identify the course from the path that you post. To. Um, so now, you know, the course, you know, the client and you know, the rating, and you use those three pieces of information to update data on the server. That's as, as big of a hint as I'm going to give you about what to do on this MP, but it very much builds on the stuff that you've already done for MP2 and MP1. So this is how to post data to the server. Uh, an example of, of both server side code that does this, some client side methods that you can use, um, and some testing code that we wrote. Uh, now, obviously, you know, we've given you tests that exercise uh, the functionality that you need to complete for MP3, 
But don't be shy about adding your own tests uh, to the test suite, particularly if you want to work on smaller pieces of functionality. That can be a really, really good way to sort of like work on one part of the MP at a time. One of the tests might be too much to complete at once, so you might you know, either comment out part of the test, which is totally okay, um, or write your own test that just does a, a smaller component of it. All right, I know that was long. Uh, good luck on MP3, you're gonna do great.